And we are live. What is up, everybody? Aaron the dog back from the beach, back to his familiar uh, dwellings uh, in the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C. Aaron the dog back with Lewis of Norton MMA for uh, another Cage Warriors uh, breakdown. We're actually doing both Cage Warriors cards taking place this weekend on UFC Fight Pass, free of charge, both the prelims and the main card, all right on Fight Pass. No excuse not to be checking those out, along with the UFC. Um, uh, Cage Warriors 131 and 132. Uh, is it from London? It's your call in London, yeah. Bethnal Green. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, sh- uh, four titles on the line between the two nights. Uh, tons of prospects, some familiar uh, Cage Warrior faces. It's funny. Some of the guys who kind of stick around Cage Warriors as long as they do. Uh, Jamie Robinson, I'm looking at you and others but uh yeah should be a good few uh few nights of fights between the ufc this is the last cage warriors i believe of the year yeah absolutely am i right yeah so um great year for cage warriors in my opinion and uh glad they're going to be sticking with the fight pass but we'll go ahead and uh we'll hop in here and uh yeah we'll get it started um well sorry about that um, with uh, Adam Cu- Adam Cullen and uh, Mikhail Byram. This is a lightweight fight. And uh, before I go too much further, let me make sure to get my uh, trusty clipboard. But uh, go ahead and uh, lead us into this one with anything you have to say about either fighter, and I'll just be right back. One second. No problem at all. Well, starting with Adam Cullen, this is going to be his third pro fight. If I'm not mistaken, he's uh he's look he's he's looking like a real prospect for England. Now, starting off the card, <laughs> there was noise in the back. <laughs> Sorry, um, sorry about that. No, you're, you're all good, dude. So Adam Cullen's okay. obviously a good-looking prospect from the UK. Do you want to, uh, if you uh, scroll down to yeah. the thing, dude? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah my bad. I'm chat, people know what I'm going to chat about. Uh, are we going to Adam Cullen? Yeah, yeah, go Adam Cullen. So, yep. Adam Cullen. My is, bad. Uh, no, no, he's a good. So, he's got uh, a few amateur fights, which are really good for him. Uh, he has taken a loss in the amateurs. So, he has he has already experienced a little bit of doubt in his in his game. He's fighting out of Next Generation in Liverpool, which is you know where uh, Molly McCann fights out of, um, where Paddy Pimlet fights out of. You've got Luke O'Reilly, who's going to be on 132. I'm sure we'll talk about him, who I saw live a few months back at York Hall. Um, a lot of good fighters there. A lot of good fighters, his weight class as well. And the bread and butter of Next Generation Liverpool is they go hard, really hard. And they're a full MMA gym. They have a slick jiu-jitsu game down there, especially Paddy Pimlet. He's, he used to be a grappler. He's been knocking people out recently and you know, in his debut in the UFC. But all these guys down there, they know how to box. The boxing down there is excellent. And again, they're all suited to this kind of weight class. They're all suited to, I would say, the featherweight lightest all the way up to maybe welter. No further. That's kind of the, the level they're at. Um you know, there's a couple gyms in Liverpool, hence they've got Calbon where all the bigger guys go to, whereas, like, you know, the Darren Teals, the Tom Aspinalls, um, the Grundies, all that. So, but no, um, Cullen's looking like a real good prospect here. Have you seen any of his tape? So I, know, uh, uh, I was, yeah, you, I was able to see, uh, yeah, I was able to see the Josh Plant uh, fight. Uh, and, yeah. and I have actually both of them, are, they're on Fight Pass, so I was able to watch both those fights. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously getting the fight to the ground really quick three minutes or sub three minutes in both of them. He, he's looking to take the back. So uh, I think that's really good. I'll just set up the Cal uh, Byram really quickly um, here. And uh, then, yeah, get to kind of my thoughts on uh, the odds that are currently available early on in the week. Uh, five and one won his last fight out. He is out of France, fought in May of last uh, or of this year, I should say. So has been uh, active a little bit, which is always good to see. Um, and yeah, a lot of decisions though. A uh, couple KOs early on, but for the most part, hasn't faced any sort of competition. The nine and one Alexander Vetko, not really familiar with him. He did lose with a uh, illegal knee. Uh, not a lot of tape available either. It does kind of seem like uh, it, this will be Adam Collins' biggest test. Um, I was able to see some Adam Collins' uh, tape. He has had a, a few losses 
along the amateurs as well, all three coming by submission, though. And I'm not seeing the submission being the issue here. But, but uh, I, I, I just see that Adam Collin should be able to get his grappling going, I would think, and keep it going well, against the striker. But could be put away by this it's thing. Classic, it's classic grappler v striker, man. It sure is. And uh, with with Macau fighting for the first time in Cage Warriors, the competition. I always rate Cage Warriors like LFA. It's got really good competition, even for debutants. You know, so people with two, three fights in Cage Warriors or LFA, they're they're still up there. They've got they're normally in good gyms. You're not just fighting out of nowhere. Whereas Macau, you don't really, you know, it's it's where where's that fight and who's he fought? Okay, don't know. You know that sort of gym, that sort of those people. So I, I would favor Adam in this um, to get it to the ground because especially now, third fight in cage warriors. Also, I always is, think yeah. that's a, yeah, I think it's a big advantage and, and I'm home, interested home because, as well, you know, he's got, he's got the English with him. Yeah. It's interesting because I do think he's going to be at a size disadvantage. That is one of my um, yeah. possible issues here is that, you know, the size does play a factor and, he, you know, I've seen with a lot of these guys, um, Liam uh, Giddens, I think we'll be talking about later on too. These guys who really have this good kind of grappling game, but then it just comes down to size against some of these guys because everybody's got technique. So I'm just wondering, you know, a little bit how they're going to look matched up. It is minus 120, minus 110. It's a pick them right now um, so far in the books to where it is available. So uh, very, very interested to kind of see how that one goes, but uh, yeah, good way to start out. Uh, the two night uh, back to back cards here. Uh, it is at 155. Next fight at 145. Nick Bagley and who you got? Who Scott. you got? Low? Have you got Adam? Oh, you got me? Yeah, I do have. I do have Adam, but uh, yeah, I'm, can, you can know, <laughs> I, but again, I, I'm curious about the size for sure. Um, but that is a yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I got to go with Adam here. I think that he gets it done. Uh, next fight is at 145, Nick Bagley versus Scott Peterson. Uh, this fight, I don't have as much to say about. This is definitely one of the fights that there is not quite as much with a 1-1 one and a one versus a 1-0, and 24- and 25-year-old fighters here. Uh, Great Britain top team against Shore Mixed Martial Arts. So we're starting to see uh, Wales come out, uh, Shore MMA. Um, starting to see a few fighters come out. There's Scott Peterson, one of which. Uh, one and one, five eight. Uh, last fought in June of this year with Cage Warriors. He got the win over there with a rear naked choke in the first round of a debutant in Marcus Lewis. Uh, lost his debut to fellow debutant uh, Matthew Elliott by decision. Um, aggressive grappling, wrestling type of uh, guy shown in a lot of his fights, but uh, yeah, he's got a lot of splits. Uh, or not a lot of splits, but two splits to end his amateur career, then lost a close decision against Matthew Elliott to start out uh, back in March of this year, rebounded well in June. But a lot of losses, uh, lost by KO, lost by uh, Barbaro Choke. So uh, definitely has a lot of experience at the amateur um, Humorous, career, though. It? Yeah. I mean, it's crazy, the amount. And so, some, some of the names on there as well, with Mike Figlack, for instance, people like that. There's some real yeah. top top professionals now on his amateur and career. It, and in Cage Warriors, he's had experience amateur and pro now. Uh, and Figlack, he went to a decision with, so definitely notable there. Um, yeah, Tobias Harila, he got a, a decision over, who we'll be talking about later on the card. Uh, tons of experiences, a really deceptive one and one um and yeah i think he should i think his date his uh decision against matthew elliott it wasn't terrible um you know it was a close fight by all means we haven't seen matthew elliott back in there as you can see matthew elliott pretty good specimen himself five straight <laughs> wins so we'll see uh i think he was supposed to get back in there uh on this card but i think he had to pull out with injury but either way uh i like what i've seen on scott peterson he does kind of uh, remind me of just kind of a, you know, just a kind of pressure, pressure first uh, wrestler puts his uh, chin a little bit out there at times. The de defense is kind of sacrificed, but uh, can break a lot of people. Uh, Bagley, 24 years old, three straight wins for him. Uh, has not fought since November of 2020, though. Uh, did fight uh, in, in with Celtic Gladiator 
where he got a flying knee win. Uh, also fought with Supreme, where he was supposed to be again uh, fighting, uh, got an arm triangle win. Supposed to fight Luke O'Neill, one and three. So he's not really tested himself too much as an amateur. Uh, mixed mixed bag, honestly. Uh, went over Jack Eglin, decided to go after October of 2019. But three of his last four were losses, of all of which were decisions. Uh, has not been finished. Faced guys like Kingsley Crawford on the amateur scene uh, as well. So that And Lerner, uh, Kavanaugh, yeah, got that draw with him a one, two and one. So kind of all over the place here. Uh, it's hard for me to really get too much of a read. I'm leaning towards Scott Peterson, just, um, just uh, out, out of my sheer fandom for how he's been fighting, but yeah. not really too familiar with this Bagley fella and not willing to probably put a bet on it. Both, up, both in up and coming gyms as well. Great Britain top team is run by Brad Pickett, Nathaniel Wood, and Ashley Grimshaw. So mm-hmm. it's it's you know they, they they cater to the this sort of weight category. So the lo- the lower weights as well, and obviously Shaw, you know, run by Jack Shaw and his dad. And you see what they're doing at the moment. They're just bringing Wales up through the ranks, and obviously he's ex Cage Warriors as well. You know, he's the ex champion. He's still unbeaten, and um, I think he's fighting Nurmagomedov Nurmag- Nurmag- again, another one. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, the, these guys, they're, they're laced with inconsistency. And it's hard, to, as you say, to get a read on it. It's it's a quite a very good matchmaking, to be fair. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it's a pick em, and it's a roll of the dice. And I would favour Scott as well, just mm-hmm. maybe just because of the background with Jack. And right. that that's the only reason behind it, to be honest with you, because of Nick's amateur record does make me a little worried. Yeah. I mean, they both really do. Uh, plus 140 right now on Scott Peterson. I'm happy to be on the dog side of this if yeah. I'm going to be on the side. Well, he won uh, the amateur but... belt, which is the picture he's holding. That's the amateur cage warrior belt. He, he managed to actually pick up. You know, he you progress when you win the amateur belt. You go to the you go to the professionals. Nick never did that. Yeah. He just decided, you know what, I need to get paid now. So mm-hmm. yeah, so I mean, it's definitely a very close fight. Um, but yeah, I'm going to lead towards Scott Peterson here and. Maybe I'll put in a little bet before it gets too much closer because I think those odds are a <laughs> little bit off. So um, next fight is a 185 fight. Um, sorry, fight of the night, mate. This is fight of the night. Oh, uh, yeah, d- absolutely. I, I'm speechless about this fight. Samir uh, Kadi versus Michael Chamo uh, here at 185 middleweight. Uh, prelim here. Uh, it is on Fight Pass. You got the 30-year-old uh, Cameroonian, uh, now uh, Newcastle, England, the Jaguar, Michael Chamo, 1-0. Going to take a long time to break down this guy. It's, uh, he will be champion, according to his uh, topology. We'll see about that. <laughs> um, four straight wins going back to the amateurs out of Itpava Jiu-Jitsu. Last fought in June of this year. Got a KO in 56 seconds of 1-2 and two, Craig Rollins. Uh Finished all four of his opponents so far, dating back to 2019. Uh, beat uh, Tom Welsh, not um, and a two and zero Josh Carrick. So uh, all of his wins sub one minute, uh, except for a guillotine choke in uh, round two of his second amateur bout, uh, and that was uh, three minute rounds. So he's gone four minutes is the longest he's gone in a fight so far in his career. Uh, has had his last three canceled for various reasons, uh, none of which are available. Was supposed to be fighting with Olympus Fighting Championship and his last opponent, Michael Richards, uh, not of uh, Kramer from Seinfeld, uh, failed his <laughs> medical. So uh, here he is now fighting a three and one Samir Kadi. Uh, the Frenchman here is three and one, no age available, not a whole lot of tape, three and uh, uh, won his last two last fall in November of this year with Gladiator Fighting Arena knockout in one minute. Um, he got the knockout of Anthony Berger. Lost a decision prior to that to a 5-1 and one opponent. Uh, had an illegal knee, uh, call another fight, and then a guillotine and a, de- a decision. I'm going to simply take Cody because he's gone longer than four minutes. You're going to take Cody? Whoa. That, that to me is, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, that's surprising I, um, uh, yeah. that's surprising to me because mate Michael is uh, he's special to me <laughs> people people have been turning him down because yeah. 
you don't get anything if you beat him. But you're gonna like the chances of you beating him at that le- when you're that level. They're not obviously matching him against someone with crazy experience. You're gonna be right. a few fights into your career. You're gonna be matched against Michael that one. Dude, he he's at a gym where they're grapplers. He's at, gra- he's, he's at a grappling gym, and dude is like Francis and Garner of middleweight for cage warriors. He's a, I, I I really fancy him going quite far in the organization. We, to be fair, I could see him as a cage warriors champion in like two years time. Well, damn. Well, if I'm and wrong, that's, that's, I've seen I've seen his amateurs. I grant you, but also there is one thing about them both, and that's no cage warriors. Yeah. Their debuts in cage warriors. So mm-hmm. it's going to be a completely different atmosphere, a completely different crowd. Um, Newcastle's up north, London's down south. So it's it's a big dynamic in England. Um, okay. He's not he's not necessarily going to be a fan favourite. He's not really known, to be honest, unless you're a, a, someone like us or people watching the stream, quite hardcore, going into mm-hmm. this. If you're just going to see some new fighters, you're going to go, oh, who's this guy? So mm-hmm. Cardi isn't going to be you know a stranger in there. I, I, I can see him causing some problems and I can see it maybe outlasting, but... I still, I still fancy Michael for a, a knockout all day. There's nothing to tell me he's not going to knock him out. And also, well, he's, a, he's a specimen. Yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, I, I didn't look into this fight too closely, as you could hear from pri- But at the same point, it's just one of these things. I've seen these in LFA a lot, um, yeah. where there's that big, you know, just usually it's a heavyweight where we see this kind of, you know, track record of just like, four minutes, four minutes. And I'm a, in a way maybe holding his own success against him. But, uh, you know, I was at least able to see some uh, potential to kind of stretch it out. So if it's stretched out, we don't really know what happens with a finisher like imagine, him. But... Imagine a middleweight Francis Ngannou that knows jiu-jitsu. Well, the odds are right now uh, minus 150. So it's still relatively really close. 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 Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, ta- ne- I'm going to jump on Michael for that. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's nearly a pick em, And I think you pretty much convinced me to at least uh, take further look into Michael here and uh, maybe beat the line movement. And again, this is very early on a very few books. So that could, that as always, lines are subject to change. So if they're yeah. way different, at the time people are listening to this, I get it. But uh, yeah. either, you're either ab- way. You're absolutely, you're absolutely right, though, dude. Because Cardi, he, he could easily be something like... It happens in LFA, as you say, all the time. If yeah, Cardi right. weathers a storm and gasses him out... Yeah. You know, what, nothing. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, it's just... Uh, again, Chamo is... He's only 30, so he's still you know in his complete prime. But 1-0 and at 30, you know... I mean, we see these later starts for a lot of these... Um, Players from Cameroon, though. Uh, next fight, uh, we won't spend a whole lot of time on this one uh, because there's not a whole lot to really discuss. We've got one and O opponent in Luke Riley against Yuki. Uh, Ar- is it Anjan Dembe? Uh, who Angdom, actually has a Angdom. Yuki Angdom. Yeah. Angdom. Yuki Angdom. Uh, yeah. It's always it's some, sometimes hard, but uh, actually Yuki Angdom does have quite a bit of experience uh, at the amateurs. Uh, another Great Britain top team representative here, and mm-hmm. I'm actually pretty excited to see uh, his debut here. Uh, I think that he could be quite, quite ready. Seven and two as an amateur, as it shows there. Uh, looks very, very ready. Brad Pickett, his coach, of course, Great Britain, last fought July 31st of this year, getting a KO finish. Uh, three KO, fin- four KO finishes on his amateur career. A few decisions, <laughs> lost two decisions as well, including one to a six and one opponent. Uh, but I mean, you're seeing seven and two, five and ones, four and two. So, not just testing him himself against one and O oh or O oh and O's oh or one and twos. Uh, definitely going to be ready for his debut here. Uh, he's fought mostly at featherweight, at times at lightweight. Uh, his last fight was at uh, featherweight at 148, actually. So, uh, slightly higher featherweight. So, he is coming down to bantamweight for this fight, it is 135. So, Huge, huge X factor there. This is going to be his first time making 135 for his pro debut against the 1 0. Luke Riley uh, was won five straight going back to his amateur career. Next generation MMA in Liverpool is where he fights out of. Be Camille Winchiak, uh, another debutant by KO in his debut. I, I have that on my phone, by the way, because I was there for it. That's right. Yeah. I have that recording on my phone. <laughs> so, how about, so you should, you'll be able to talk about it better than me. Uh, Go ahead and oh, give me your thoughts. He's just a slick, slick striker. 
in and yeah. out, very Leon Edwards, tippy tapper mm-hmm. on the legs. He he shot some body shots with uh, leg uh, body kicks. Sorry, I landed some body kicks on um on Camille in that fight, and he he took a couple as well. Um, Molly McCann's teammate. If you ask anyone at Next Gen, they're saying this kid is the the deal. He's so young. He's so physically fit as well and he just moves like a season pro already he's got a gun of a left hand on him as well what's um, your thoughts on him taking on a featherweight here that's what worries me because mm-hmm. yuki's no mug he's he, not at all no i think this is extremely good matchmaking and i do favor yuki because he's a grappler he, yeah he can smother if he can smother so the, the, the sniper of a right of the you know he's got at any point you can smother a striker at this kind of at this kind of level, you've got mm-hmm. such a high win percentage, and I will favor that in this. I'm shit hot on Luke here, but mm-hmm. my money goes towards Yuki if I was to bet it, and I don't yeah. like saying because I I was so high on him. He's but honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Yuki gets sniped in thirty seconds. To be honest with you, I just what? I'm really curious about this weight cut for Yuki. This is thirteen yeah. pounds lower. Uh, here, 148 is what he was weighing in at, at points. He was weighing in at uh, lightweight. I believe he did a catch weight at 160 at one point. This guy is by no means small. Um, and facing a striker, you suck out that weight. Your chin is significantly affected. Your gas is significantly affected. Your strength is significantly affected. I mean, bigger is not better necessarily. Um, but he's yeah, with good I, coaches. I don't think they'd let him do it. If no, I, I, I get, but you know, I mean, doing it in the gym, doing it in test cuts, all of that is not doing it under the lights. And uh, I mean, especially with Luke, there's uh, his movement his in is such a huge part of it. I get, he got a quick finish in his last fight there, but I think often we talk about the grappler or the wrestler kind of drawing out the fight and making it longer. If the striker can kind of keep this on his bike, keep the movement going, yeah. keep him stuff some takedowns by the second round third round i could see luke riley taking over he has decisions on his record as well it's interesting when the one and oh fighter is the has against the oh no is the less experienced but he's more experienced in this weight class he's more experienced in cage warriors i um yeah it, it i i was initially leaning yuki uh i think i'm gonna go with luke riley though you're gonna go uh, luke yeah, I think I'm, going... I'm so split. I'm so split. Yeah, I, would, I, I want I, Luke to win. I want Luke to win. Luke's That's got me. Luke's got to know that everybody who's going to be coming against him is going to be looking to take him down to win the fight, most likely. Yeah, and I so uh, that I I believe that he'll be well prepared um, with his camp. Uh, Yuki, I just don't like going 13 pounds down uh, for your pro debut. I'm not crazy about it. I would have liked yeah. to see me. I. As much as I'm the anti catchweight guy, every time I see a catchweight, I hate it. I would have liked to see him with a 140 catchweight for his uh for his pro debut. The 148 to 135 thing, maybe I'm making too big of a deal of it, but it's not against a bad guy here in Luke Riley. Luke Riley, very good five straight wins going back to his amateur career. Uh, these guys are very well matched up. It's a close fight. I'm going with the striker and the striker grappler. So one's, we do training just, with, one's training with Nathaniel Wood and one's training with Brad, uh, Paddy Pimlet. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> so they're both go. they're both going to be extremely ready. Uh, minus one forty right now for Luke Riley, plus one ten for Yuki uh, and Jim on okay. Jam Day. Is that how you say it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then yeah, I so <laughs> I I I would I would think that those odds may be uh, flip as people go to a topology page as people see the maybe the weigh-ins and everything and they see this yuki guy looking like yeah. sexy yama uh but <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll see we'll see uh sexy yama still fighting uh with one fc it's crazy Excellent. and looking and looking Never absolute, retire. <laughs> no and looking absolutely juiced but that's all good uh this next fight here uh i i really do appreciate the cage warriors um prelims because they really are uh Quality. I mean, you got a guy like John Ndoy on here. Uh, I'm a big fan of him. Uh, I yeah. broke him down. Uh, I think we broke him down a while ago. I picked him in the last fight. Uh, I, I just, I don't know. There's something about this guy I like. Uh, and, you know, still only nine and uh, three in his career. Uh, taking on a seven and seven Tom Burns here. Uh, we've seen Tom Burns a lot in uh, Cage Warriors. This is one of these just Cage Warriors for life guys. 
Uh, yeah. He's on he's on blood, sweat, and tears. He's got that seven and seven record, five eight, one fifty five er here. Uh, finally making the trip down to featherweight. Uh, he has been dragging his feet, not wanting to do this for. I mean, every single fight with Tom Mearns at 155, you would hear at some point. Eventually, he's going to try to cut down to 145, but he's got a full-time job, and he doesn't yeah. want – like, he'd rather commit to the technique than the weight cut. Well, he's finally committing to the weight cut, which uh, we'll see how that works out for him. I believe he's over 30 years old now. I forgot to make note of his uh, age, but I believe he's um, 30, 31 maybe at this point. Uh, did get a win his last time out with Cage at Cage Warriors Academy Southeast uh, against a two and two Joshua Onwardi by split decision. Uh, Joshua Onwardi, that... just so you know, is is very good. He's yeah, uh, Darren, it, uh, Darren Stewart's protege. Okay, so he just kind of has taken two some tough fights too soon in some ways, maybe to get that record. Like that, but... those names there, Bell Hardy and Steve Amable. Right, right. Steve, Steve Amable. It's good <laughs> yeah i mean kieran but, lister too but uh, jeremy petley and people like that that's where i start to worry Journey. right stephen hooper uh, another yeah. you know i mean losses, yeah he he has lost to guys like aiden lee also but uh i mean the wins are over decky mcleon by split i was able to watch that but he just he goes in there looks to grapple looks to grapple looks to grapple he doesn't really like the strike much uh, not much on the strikes. He's going to have a severe reach disadvantage, uh, speed disadvantage, uh, athletic disadvantage against Jean and Doy, uh, the Frenchman here. 34 years old, but just a very well-conditioned 34-year-old, in my opinion. Uh, 5'9", uh, so he's going to have about three to four inches on Tom Means, coming off a really close split decision against Harry Hardwick. Uh, no shame there. The decision against Kieran Clark was a great fight with Bellator. And we've seen how Kieran Clark's uh, moved on from there. Um, finished uh, Korean Eden with a knee in the second round. Uh, I think it looks pretty – yeah, it was a really good, really, really clean knee. Um, you know, he's he hasn't fought faced the craziest level of competition at times in his career. Uh, that is something I'll say. But um, still, I just think he absolutely schools Tom Mearns here. Um, after the first round, Tom is going to be spamming takedowns if he doesn't walk right into a knee <laughs> in round one. I think he probably gets a knee finish, though, or an, or finished by strikes for Jean and Doy at some point. I can't disagree with anything you just said, mate. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for me, this is a clear cut. This is one of the probably the, should be one of the biggest favorites on the card. I like Tom, but it's just uh, I don't, with respect to him, I don't think he's good enough. No, and it's just, you know, cutting to 145 pretty late here. Uh, yeah, yeah. John, John is a low striker at points. That is true. Uh, UFC betting experience, good point. Um, but, yeah, I don't think uh, Mearns. I think he uh, just has, has more weapons. He's got more ways to win. He's got a lot more weapons in his arsenal. You know, he, he's a good grappler as well. He's not, you know, it's not like if you get him down, you're going to just sub him, which is what And this is Mearns. And this, I, let me, and this is Mearns' first fight at 145, too. Yeah. Um, you know, Sorry. in quite a in quite a while, so clearly he's been avoiding making those cuts, and now he's making it against I think one of the bigger 145ers. Uh, yeah, he's a big and, and, yeah. and Doy is near. Yeah, it looks like a lightweight in there. So minus 300 right now. As soon as that price is available, I would hammer that because I think it should be about double that. Uh, honestly, um, I think Endoy absolutely cruises here uh, to a win and most likely by a by a finish. Uh, moving on to the next fight here. Uh, this looks like uh, our first squash match of the night. We have PK Zadea at 3-0 and taking on the 3-4 and uh, Ben Reese. Uh, didn't look into this one a whole lot. Uh, I think PK Zadea has three finishes in his three fights uh, as a pro, however. So it uh, does look pretty good for the 5-8 New England uh, fight or England fighter here, not New England. Uh, he, um, yeah, there's not a lot, there's not a lot more to say. Uh, actually, he has two decisions in one finish by a rear naked choke as an amateur. A uh, good amount of experience here. Um, getting a few finishes, don't recognize a whole lot of the fighters he's been against. But, uh, that being said, he's taking on a guy in Ben Reese who's 
uh, three and four. Uh, he has fought with Brave FC also, so has fought with a decent uh, camp. PK Zadea has. Uh, Reese is coming off of a win against Paul Reed with Raged uh, UK 10. He was 23 and 12. It was an arm injury that ended it. The fight was in 2019. Uh, other than that, three of his four or four of his last five have been losses, uh, two stoppages and one or uh, two stoppages by strikes and one with a rear naked choke. I, I don't know. I'm not going to be betting on this one. I'm going to take PK Zadea just, um, but not really one I looked into too closely. No, I would, I would agree with that as well. PK Zadea because or however you say his name, I'm not sure. I don't. I haven't seen a lot of Ben Reese. He's one that you kind of just. He's the make your coffee over, or your whatever. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. when you're watching when you're watching the cards. But you know I I remember watching him against Josh Reed and Josh Reed is you know he's up there as one of the best. You know fought for the title twice now and he, he smashed him to bits. He showed the levels that he's not. He's just not going to get to. He got absolutely mauled by yeah. so many guys that are very average in 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 the organization and. PK looks quite good, actually. He's got some real good technical skills. He's got really decent striking. He's got great movement, and I think he could, I think he could finish Ben quite quickly. To be honest with you, yeah. I wouldn't touch it. Don't touch it with money. But <laughs> no, minus six hundred already, plus four hundred to Reese. So I mean, it's already a steamed line, and oh, wow. everybody That's is big. yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm not going to be touching it, uh, and I'm going to move on to the next fight. Uh, we have plenty of fights to talk about, and I think this is a way more interesting bantamweight fight here at um, between Liam uh, Giddens, who I uh, brought up a little bit earlier, taking on one of my favorite guys in Kingsley Crawford. Uh, Everyone. Yeah, uh, yeah every, everybody loves Kingsley. Um, so I'm not unique in that. Um, so, And I did really like Liam Giddens before the last fight. I'll be honest. Uh, <laughs> did you lose? I, yeah, I did lose some money on Liam that last fight. Uh, so uh, this fight is at Bantamweight. We have a 145er moving down, a 125er moving up. Uh, the silent assassin, Kingsley Crawford, 6-3. and three, the, Got the afro, uh, 24 years old, only 5'8", 74-inch reach. Fought in September with Cage Warriors. Got the win, Britain top team. Again, uh, got a Barbaro choke of Adam Wilson. Great fight, really evenly matched. Uh, took on a uh, 2-0 Ben Ellis in at featherweight and lost a decision uh, with Cage Warriors, though. He's been with Cage Warriors, uh, I believe, his whole uh, pro career. Last fight was a, was a catch weight, so he is uh, you know, doing the right thing and moving down appropriately. Um, 140 and now he is making his debut at 135 losses to aiden steven and uh james hendon we'll talk about no, sh- no shame bit. in either of those yeah not at all uh wins over guys like uh lewis monarch uh by triangle that was a great fight there knocked out scott butters who no one knows about or no one knows who that is but um yeah either way uh he's been taking the right step up adam wilson last time out that was a great fight got the third round finish with the barbaro choke uh, definitely like seeing the second, third round type of finishes. He uh, seems to be able to keep the pace as he's moving down to 135 at, at 140, getting the third round finish. Last fight, Liam Giddens, um, Sky 5'6", uh, former uh, former flyweight, uh, last time out against Gerardo Fanny. Uh, just uh, he got absolutely rocked and put away. That was at 130, so... He was kind of testing his way, making his way up, uh, or make, thinking about making his way back down. But he's been, you know, thinking about bantamweight, thinking about flyweight. He's kind of stuck between the two. A um, little bit of chin issues here. He's been knocked down two of his three losses um, to Brian Boland and Gerardo Fanny, though two good fighters. No shame there. Beat Josh Reed with the uh, triangle choke. Adam Amsinger or Amara Singh. Uh, I'm a singer. Never, uh, Dean's I'm younger a singer. brother. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Dean's a younger brother. So, um, yeah, again, uh, and Elio good, Hoy, there's some real good wins on this. Yeah. Record. Really good level of competition. Really good level. I just think that here against Kingsley, he's going to have a really tough time from a physical perspective. Um, I just, uh, I, I look at him and he looks like he should probably be a flyweight, but I think it's tough for him and he's not quite a bantamweight. 
So I think it's kind of that 130 uh, type. And Kingsley, I think, is going to be all of that 136 limit when he weighs in. And, uh, yeah, I think he showed the good gas at 140. I anticipate the five more pounds of weight cut, he should be able to still show that. I'm a Kingsley fan. I'm a Kingsley guy. I got to go Kingsley. You're going to see this as well a lot. Next generation v Britain top team. You know, mm-hmm. throughout the whole thing, going to see Liverpool v London essentially, uh, North yeah. v South. So um, I will never ever bet against Kingsley. <laughs> he's, I was talking about it yesterday at Brad Wheeler. Um, yeah. He's just a really nice guy as well. So, yeah, yeah. Check yeah. out the uh, uh, preview for 269 on your channel right now. Oh, cheers, man. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a tough one because Giddens is he's beaten some real top dudes, but he's also lost to some not so good dudes. And it's it's almost like do you remember Michael Johnson's record? He's got a win over Tony Ferguson and Dustin Poirier, and he loses yep. to Clay Guidas. And it's that yeah. sort of I'm getting that kind of vibe from Liam, but I know he's better than his record suggests. The losses should he should almost be seven and one. Beating Adam Amasinger, who is an elite level striker, trains out of Hardy, uh, trains with Dan Hardy a lot. Um, there's a lot of good Josh Reed. The win over Josh Reed is mental. You know, Josh Reed is the mm. guy that nearly finished Nathaniel Wood in their fight and just obviously lost to Wooding. But there's some real good names on that. But Kingsley, if he can make the weight and mm. be healthy at the weight, I fa- I favor him. I think he's going to be too too big, too strong. He's really long as well. He's got a 74 inch reach for yep. five foot eight. I have a 74 inch reach. I'm six foot. So. He's, he's yeah, but like, Liam, it's not gonna matter with Liam if he gets his way in this fight. That reach is yeah. irrelevant because Liam's gonna be leaning, leaning, takedowns, two to three takedowns around. I don't and, think he can take him down. I yeah, it, he can take yeah. Down. but if he does, that's a turn. If he gets him down, especially in the first round, you know, or at any point, frankly, that's be huge for Liam. But I don't think he can. I don't think he can either. I do like Kingsley in this fight. Uh, minus 135, plus 105 on Giddens. So uh, definitely close in the odds. And uh, it'll probably go towards uh, Kingsley, I would anticipate. So I'd get it early on if you are leaning Kingsley here. Um, we're to the featured fight in the prelims in a really good fight in uh, at 155 pounds in Yasin Beliad. Uh, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. And Danilo uh, Baluardo, uh, this is at 155. Uh, uh, good fight between a former UFC competitor and, uh, and an up and coming uh, Frenchman in Yassine. Uh, I like both, I like this matchup quite a bit. We'll be breaking down the Nilo Caterpillar Baluardo first. Still only 27 years old, uh, six foot, 74 and a half inch reach out of Milan, Italy, 13 and six, uh, taking on the seven and one. Uh, Taking on the seven and one Yassine. Uh um Danilo, uh, as I just said, sorry, uh gotten a little crossed up there. Uh won his last fight out uh, with Golden Cage, referee stoppage in the third round. Uh it was kind of a return to form from him from three straight losses, two of which were by ground and pound in the UFC to Joel Alvarez and Marco Madsen. Um no shame in those, honestly. Uh, we've seen Joel Alvarez now and Marco Madsen, world-class wrestler, and that first round has tons of power and uh, showed it there. Uh, then lost to an Adrian Zelinski, a 19-9 and opponent by knockout. So a little bit of chin issues. Um, they've been shown a few times. He's been put out by ground and pound by A.J. McKee Jr. as well. No shame in that with Bellator. Um, also put away by punches in his other two against Stefan Paterno and Luke Jellick. Uh, again, good records of the guys who put him away, really high level uh, for the most part. Uh, looks to, you know, is well-rounded, looks to get to the ground eventually, though. We'll use the striking to set up his grappling. Uh, good chokes, good arm triangle chokes, as well as uh, good uh, modified Darce chokes. Um, last, fight out, last fight out went three rounds and uh, got the finish there. Um, you know, and it was at a catch weight of 175. Uh, so a little bit interesting uh, there, but this fight is at 155. That was in um, that was in February, so I anticipate he's able to make the trip back down. But uh, it will be interesting uh, to see how he does with that. Uh, kind of weird. He was thinking about moving up maybe, and then Yassine, 7-3, and three, Cage Warriors um, veteran here, last fought in March of this year. 
uh, got the win over Tom Mearns uh, by decision. Uh, it's tough to take downs in that fight, but was taken down at times by Tom in the early rounds. Uh, that is the issue uh, with Yassin. He wants to strike uh, for sure, and it was not an emphatic decision over Tom Mearns, honestly. Uh, it was pretty close uh, the, mm. in the first two rounds. Uh, and he also uh, got finished by Faraz Yam and Jack Grant, two UFC competitors, no shame there, and Craig McIntosh. Uh, all got the finishes by submission. Uh, Danilo, I think, should be able to take advantage of that too and get the finish uh, here. Uh, I think that Yassin's good, but I'm just a little bit questioning the level of competition and to kind of struggle with Tom Mearns, let Tom get the fight to where he wants to. I would think Danilo gets the fight to where he wants to. Yeah, I agree 100% with, I think Danilo can dictate where this phase, you know, this fight goes. Um, losing to Jack Grant, there's no shame in that. Jack's, you know, that was in the, that was in the tournament to try and get to the yep. belt where he eventually obviously fought Ian Gary. So Jack is no mug. He's in Bellator now, just beat, you know, Bag and Tag Nathan Jones. Yep. Some real good guys, you know, so um, Danilo worries me. Since, yeah, I think he is quite chinny. I agree with you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think he's susceptible to a, 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 you know, a nice shot, but I don't see you see him landing one, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, like we saw quite, how Matt, I think he's quite yeah. slow. He's quite slow. Yeah, we saw like Mads Brunel look, it looks in cage words. And obviously Mads Brunel is taking those steps up. But I mean, these guys, when they kind of have these failures at the high level, getting there too soon. And then come back. Like if Chris Chris Fishgold comes back to Cage Warriors, we're gonna see a return to form for Chris Fishgold, like in several yeah. fights. It just and doesn't I work think, for some guys. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Belliardo, only 27 years old still. I mean, he was making his debut in the UFC in his mid twenties, uh, out of the Italian MMA scene. There's levels to this. Uh he found and out of, and one of the losses is to a guy now that's just on a roll in Madison. Joel Alvarez and Joel and, Alvarez. And Alvarez. Yeah, and the yeah. both of them, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. Really harsh matchmaking. <laughs> yeah. So um, you know, and then uh yeah, I just want to real quick, uh thanks, JR Smiles. I appreciate it. Uh we try to cover uh as much MMA as we can. Uh but thanks for joining he's not, and he's then, not wrong. He's a good chance. Yeah. I appreciate it. I try to surround myself with people way smarter than me so that I can look great as a result. Uh, Yassin's uh, nickname, Crazy Legs, definitely has really good kicks uh, and things like that, which, again, are things that are going to be tough to use against Danilo. Uh, my, then Danilo is only minus 180 right now, plus 150 on Yassin. So a lot of people are buying into the young Frenchman here. Uh, Kakai Akagi, what up, my friend? Uh, good to see you here as always. Um, but, yeah. That's a really good way to um, tip off the final part of the prelims, the feature prelim there. Really good one there. I'm excited to see it at 155. Uh, moving on to the main card, and we start out with a banger at 170. Uh, I love this fight. Uh, I really enjoy watching this fighter in open. Elliot and Maderis Flaminas. Uh, I think this is going to be a very, very close uh, matchup here. Um, but an interesting one for sure. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll be starting with by breaking down Madars uh, Flaminas, uh, the Latvian fighter now fighting at Grimsby, uh, England, 33 and a half years old. Uh, Bateman MMA, taking on Shore MMA here in Oban, uh, Elliot, the Wales product. Uh, and the Latvian Express, though, I'll be breaking down first here in Flaminas. Uh, he is 33 years old now, so... In, you know, on the tail end, uh, or you know, not closer, closer to the tail end of 155 uh, peak or prime, I, you could say. Lost his last fight out with Cage Warriors, but eight and three overall for the 33 year old, six two, really good size here um, for the division. Uh, lost Jack Grant by Anaconda Choke in round two in March. No shame at all, obviously. There, his three losses in his last four have come to Adam Proctor. Matthias Figalek and Jack Grant. Zero, zero shame. Two of those coming by submission here. So definitely not going to be uh, an issue against Oban Elliott. Oban Elliott doesn't know how to spell submission. Oban Elliott goes in there to bang uh, at this point. Uh, maybe he's developing it, but a uh, win over Mike Stan in there and George Hardwick uh, definitely was an impressive uh, win there for Maduris. Uh He's just... He's crafty. He's got a win over Matthew Bonner uh, back in the day. Six and zero, Kenneth Richardson. I mean, he's beaten some good guys. Um, he's got good gas. Uh, likes to, 
has good finishing ability as well. Uh, he's crafty, he's tricky, um, and he's just taking on a young kind of young banger in Evil Oban Elliott here. Um, really, really like this guy. Sure, MMA. Hopefully, that's helping with uh, a little bit of the overall game here. Uh, got knocked out by Mike Figalak. We'll talk about both Figalaks here. Uh, rebounded against George McManus with a quick knockout, two minutes there. Um, he's got uh, – actually, he does have a couple submission wins, so I don't know what I'm talking about um, here <laughs> uh, with Oban. I, um, but, yeah, I, I wouldn't have been able to tell it from his cage – from his last couple of Cage Warriors fights. Um, he definitely has fallen in love with the striking a little bit uh, more. But, yeah, he's got two submission uh, wins and submission wins as an amateur. So, uh, scratch that. Um, but – Either way, kind of hasn't faced a huge level of competition yet. This is by far the highest level and most experienced fighter he's uh, faced in Medeiros. And Medeiros is going to uh, pull out a lot of tricks, I think, and uh, try to get this one uh, into the later rounds. Uh, but I really am buying I, – I, I like Oban. I'm, I'm buying into Oban here uh, quite a bit, and uh, I'm just going to be – right back as I run a business here and uh, go ahead and give your thoughts on the fight and correct what I just was talking about with Oban. This is, I think I'll be a close fight, um, but good test for both. I like Oban. I'll be right back. No worries. Yeah. I, I, it's hard to disagree with it other than I do think he's uh, a little better than maybe suggested on, on the ground. I, I, the thing is Fleminas has, has fought some good guys, but he, when he, when he does fight the better guys, he always falls short. And for me, that's, that's kind of where he's lacking. Um, I can see him kind of pulling out a couple of tricks, to be honest, especially with, especially with movement. If he can, if he can create angles, land a few jabs like he loves to do. He loves a lead leg. He likes to snatch. He likes to snatch little, um, little trips against the fence. It's a, uh, he could, he could wind up on top, and and that's where, that's where he, Mad, you know, that's where Fleminas kind of can control it. He has a great top game. And that might be where he, that might be where the short, short athletic kind of guys, the Welshman might fall short a little bit. Is where he's on his back. He hasn't got the best guard, in my opinion. I think he's got a good top game, but not a good guard. Whereas I think Fleming, I think they both got a good top game, and that's the point. I think if Fleminas can implement the top game, then the ground game might be in trouble, which is might might be where you're thinking of his 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 jujitsu. Yeah, him, but it's um, yeah. It's a yeah, I apologize for having that backwards. No, no, you're, it was no, just no. recency bias from his last fight. I should have. Uh, no, he, 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 everyone's susceptible, but uh, I think they're quite. It's so well matched and balanced. It's hard. This one is a real top pick for me. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna sit on the fence for it. To be honest with you, for no, it's it's... fifty-one forty-nine towards Fleminas for me. Okay, but, um, so. So we do have a disagreement here. Uh, yeah, they are only, by, on. only by a percent. Only by a percent. <laughs> and it's pretty, sh it's pretty shocking here because they are all on uh, Oban here. Minus three hundred is what it's opening at. Plus two forty for off uh, Flaminus. Uh, so uh, very, very interesting. Uh, you know, I think a much closer fight than many think. I've loved watching Flaminus's fights um, and Oban. Uh, does look like I it look like he's getting a little bit of the Jorge Grigel syndrome, maybe having the ground game and falling in love with the striking. Um, yeah. But uh, next fight is a catchweight fight. Uh, thank God we have a catchweight fight at 190. Uh, and this one is, uh, I think, another uh, one of those things that's a little bit of a squash, uh, maybe potentially here. Uh, and may, you can tell me if I'm wrong here, but. Uh, Chris Leroy Duncan, they seem to really like this guy's power and his striking and want to see it on display here, taking on uh, 10 and uh, 5, Justin Moore, who is uh, now 37 years old, just turned 37 last month at Phoenix MMA. 5'9", 185, are taking on the 6'2", 185, 26-year-old Chris Duncan here, 4-0, out of Gloucester, England. Um uh, yeah, Gloucester. Uh, Gloucester. You know, I'll just say England and you can, you know, you can tell me where he's from. <laughs> oh, if it's the same to me. I'll get uh, if an English person sees this and I don't correct oh, it. <laughs> no, it's completely fair. Uh, two fight win streak against Will Curry. Four fight win streak overall. Three finishes. 
uh, coming by strikes, a spinning back uh, kick and punch finish of uh, Lucas Bacharski, uh, definitely a highlight you can see out there. It's Will Curry knockout in the second round somehow. They were like, Will Curry, fight him again. I don't know why. Um, but, yeah, two, two uh, wins over Will Curry in 2021. Four overall, a legit striker, has lost a couple as an amateur to guys like uh, Magomed Khabib Umarov, which is the most Russian name ever, <laughs> and Sultan Amarov, uh, both by decision. Uh, and then uh, Gustafson, uh, Andres Berg Gustafson, who is 7-0. Uh, you know, so definitely has been tested a lot as an amateur, very, very long amateur um, career, and now as a pro 4-0. Legit knockout power, um, looks like a beast. Justin Moore. 10 and 5, uh, won his last fight out with Supreme in February of 2020. Uh, with ground and pound, it was a, another catchway of 195. Uh, lost by arm triangle to Will Flurry, got knocked out by uh, Charlie uh, Ward in the second round, uh, and choked out by Andy Mazzallo. Don't really recognize any of the wins on his record. His sec- second to last win was against a 26 and 81, ga- 81 guy. Uh, so yeah, give me Duncan here. It's a squash matchup. Duncan knocks him out. Probably if anyone, inside bets, of three if anyone bets more, I would love to DM me. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. You're, you're, cra- yeah. you're, you're crazy. You're crazy. Yeah. This is this is Duncan's world. Yeah, I, I, don't know how, I don't know why Cage uh, Graham Boylan is a genius. He's you know the, the Dana White. <laughs> he's the president of Cage Warriors. I don't know why they've got more in here, other than just to get. You know, get sacrificed. A highlight reel for Duncan. Yeah, it's it's a sacrificial fight for sure. Yeah. What, do, yep, exactly. the, have you got the odds for this one? It's minus five hundred right now, which it's going to be a thousand by fight night. Easy. Um, plus Easy. three, plus three seventy five on more. Uh, in that, yeah, it's, was a bit no, of a villain as well. He's going to get booed. He's going to yeah, get yeah, booed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Duncan is going to roll here. Um, so we're going to move on to our first of four title fights. We'll be talking about here. Um, really good. All, all the title fights are very good. George Hardwick taking on Met. This is a really good fight. Uh, mm-hmm. George Hardwick taking on uh, Mendy uh, Ben Lachnahar Lock- uh, or Ladnahar. I believe. I believe. Uh, I apologize on the pronunciation. I'll just call Mendy Ben here from here on out. Taking on George Hardwick. Uh, I like both these guys quite a bit. I'm going to get that out of the way right away. It is a vacated title. No fighter is defending. We got an 8 and 1 versus a 5 0 and 1. MMA Factory versus Middlesbrough uh, Fight Academy. Middlesbrough. Uh, God damn, this American. Why, who put <laughs> this American on here? Uh, but Mendy <laughs> Ben, uh, 5 0 and 1 here uh, for the Frenchman. 5 uh, 11, good size here. Six straight wins dating back to his amateur career. Knocked out Steve McIntosh. Uh, six and one fighter with a clean left hook in his last fight. Um, it. Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, just put on the pressure from start to finish. All of his fights, uh, you can see, kind of runs out to the uh, center, puts the pressure on, does not let up. Uh, three of his last four have been wins with first round uh, knockouts uh, with punches, hooks, knees. Uh, Joe McLaughlin, uh, I believe is how you say his name. It was a majority decision. Um, that was kind of one where uh, I think he did kind of realize that needed to shore up the defensive wrestling a little bit because that's where people are going to go uh, with Mendy. Uh, trading on the feet is going to be a bad time for fighters, I think. He's really slick, good movement, uses his length, fights to fights at his uh, length. I had a couple fights that fell through. Unfortunately, uh, Mendy did have an injury uh, they had to withdraw from with Agi Sandari back in um, March of this year, and then in June, Paul Redmond was injured. Um, I and now he's uh, getting a title shot against a really good guy in George Hardwick. Um, these guys both like to move forward, put on pressure, push the pace. Uh, Hardwick, I think, maybe even more so, won four straight since his loss, uh, beating a uh, good, good amount of good fighters, including Dean Truman and Jacob uh, Donnell in his last two. Uh, punches the body with Dean Truman. Just put on a clinic in that fight. Mm. Dean Truman didn't look like he wanted to be there. Um, Which is saying then, something. To do that to yeah, Dean. Is, yeah, yeah, exactly. That And his last loss was to Maduris Flaminas. So, again, Maduris has faced the best of the best. And uh, 
won a unanimous decision against uh, Hardwick here. So uh, guillotine choke his last time out. I do think that getting to the ground and working the ground game, possibly looking for a submission, could be a really good route for George Hardwick. Um, yeah, this I think this is such a good fight. Um, mm. It's back and forth. Uh, I I am so so tempted to go with Mendy, uh, just because I really am a fan of uh, his. I just it's hard for me in this five round fight to not see George being able to get it to the ground, mm-hmm. um, and if he does, I'm pretty worried about Mendy's ability to get back up and possible abilities to defend the submission. I was back and forth. I was originally lending re- leaning Mendy Ben. I'm gonna go with George Hardwick. Uh, unfortunately, I think a decision, not unfortunately, just my rooting and I'm rooting for Mendy, um, just slightly from a personal standpoint, but I think George is able to implement a good wrestling, good pressure and on the feet, he's no slouch either, um, at all. Very good experience also. And I think, um, uh, Mendy learns from this one a lot and it's decision, possibly submission. Um, but I'll take George Hardwick. Yeah, I got a, I got a, I got Hardwick out working him for five rounds. I I think the cardio of George is phenomenal, yeah. and they 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 mirror each other quite, you know, quite similarly in in how they pressure opponents and how they keep a, a pace on them. But I just think George does it better. Um, I think he's fought better people. That's yeah, Hardwick brothers fight for your money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. the Hardwick brothers are just they're just beasts, man. They're yeah. they're proper hard Englishmen. Mm-hmm. With so many skills, um, not saying Medi Ben isn't because I would favor him in the striking. If it's a straight kickboxing match, you'd be silly mm-hmm. to bet George over it. But it's not yeah. kickboxing, and I think going twenty-five minutes without taking him down, and he ain't keeping George off him all, all yeah. twenty-five minutes. And I don't see him flash KOing him either. Yeah. So I, fa- I think based on how many weapons you've got and how long the fight is, I think that if it was a three rounder, I would go with Medi. But because mm. it's a five rounder and it's a title shot, I'm going with Georgie Boy all day. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a really good fight. Minus one sixty on George Hardwick, uh, yeah. plus one thirty on Mendy Ben. I think that's uh, about right. That's about yeah, right. Yeah, I think that's about right. I I could see it kind of sticking around that um, through to fight night. So really good first of our four uh, title fights over the two nights here. Uh, really excited to see uh, who comes out on top uh, of that one. Uh, Headliner for the first night is our 185 uh, title fight here uh, between Matthew Bonner and De- and Jati Mellon um, is how I'm going to go with it. Um, and Jati Mellon making his return to MMA after a few years off. Uh, but 7-0, really hyped up product here. Uh, the Ivory Coast now fighting out of France deal with DNA Fighter. 5'11", 185, taking on the 6'2", 185. Uh, journeyman in Matthew Bonner, uh, the beast, 10, 6, and 1, 30, nearly 31 years old. So got the journeyman, young. Journeyman that's t- turned a corner recently, isn't he? That's, that's what he is. Yeah. It's, yeah, seriously, has found himself, uh, no kidding. But Jotty here uh, hasn't had to find himself because he's 7-0. and 0. Uh, Hasn't fought since December of 2019, however. Uh, and it was a split decision over a good opponent in Islam Abdul Basset, a uh, nine and one fighter, really close uh, fight. I thought, I frankly thought uh, Mellon did clearly take it. Good, really good wrestling, and it had a huge double leg takedown at the end that uh, I think shows that he has really advanced IQ for six and zero, which he was at the time. Uh, knows what he needs to do to win rounds. Uh, it's an instinct I do respect out of him quite a bit. But what a tough. Uh, test here coming back uh, to a five round title fight after two years off. Uh, and you're only, you know, really only having one fight against a notable fighter here in Melanin. So uh, he's taking a big rest risk here. A um, lot of finishes uh, with punches and ground and pound. Uh, good wrestling as well. Uh, he's definitely tested himself early on in his career, um, you know, but he's been off for a couple years now. And Matthew Bonner. Uh, made his mistakes and he's learned from him uh, inside of uh, the cage for sure. Four straight wins now for the next generation MMA Liverpool product, 30 years old here. Uh, last loss to Jamie Richardson, who we'll be talking about on the next card. Uh, has a loss to Madaris Flaminas, uh, again, as we mentioned, and then Marco Madsen. So, really good losses. Um, has tested himself constantly, made the mistakes early on uh, in his career for sure. Um, his last three uh, fin- two finishes by uh, KO and then one finish 
with his mission, including a decision over Matt Inman, who's a good fighter, James Webb, and then Nathias. All, uh, all champions, all cage yeah. warrior champions. Yep. Yeah. And just uh, really and pushing it, second, third round finishes and a fourth round finish. Um, I just think Jati did show uh, some slowing down there a couple years ago. He's now coming back. He's never fought five rounds. I just think that Matthew Bonner has to take this one here. Um, he's going to take Jotty into the deep waters, I think, and finish him somewhere in the second, third, fourth round. 100%. 100% agree with you on this. He's been prepped so big since he's gone to Liverpool and done, you know, mm-hmm. he's he's turned the corner. The losses he's got in his record as well, you know, Madsen, Flaminas, no shame in that. Jamie Richardson, Jamie Richardson's a good fighter. You know, he's he's again someone that stays in cage wars for a while. He's he's fluctuated between 170 and 185. He's definitely at 170 year. He's like yep. he's 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 too he's a tweener. He's one of those. Mm-hmm. He's um so those losses aren't anything. I think I was there as well for that one. Warren Key looked like he's on steroids his whole career. So I mm-hmm. like that win as well. Um Matt Inman, great, great win. James Webb was on a bloody roll, you know, jujitsu yeah. with Matthew yeah. Matthias Frederick, brilliant fighter as well. These are good wins, man, at this weight class. And uh, if he wins this fight, man, I would not be surprised he gets a call from somebody because yeah. this is this is something. He's turned the corner. This is a great win streak against great people. Another undefeated mm-hmm. if he gets this. And I don't see how he gets hurt. I don't mm-hmm. see where he loses this fight in the striking. I think he's got the power, definitely. I'm not mm-hmm. saying Mellon can't hit because clearly can. But the technique is is surely with, you know, I just, yeah. I'm, I'm, I think Mellon has to go in there and blitz him in the first round and go gas uh, completely. Yeah, he cannot 100%. think he's going to be winning it. Yeah, it's a decision yeah. in five rounds here. So that's yeah. my only thoughts on it. Uh, it's a pick em right now. I am shocked. One fifth, minus 115 both ways. I like Matthew Bonner uh, all day yeah. here. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ignore so. his record. Ignore the record. Yeah, so he was zero two in his first two. So you know, and, he, and he's and he's, and he's only and he's only thirty. So um, yeah. yeah, that's gonna conclude the one thirty one section of the card. Just gonna make my way over to Cage Wars one thirty two. I also will be breaking down LFA one twenty this uh, Thursday with uh, Lucky Locks MMA, and I'll be uh, return of the bunny tomorrow as Boston Comments herself bunny makes a return for. UFC 269 breakdown show will be live Wednesday night. Uh, so it'll be a little later for you. Um, but yeah, it's 7 p.m. Eastern for the people over in the States, 4 p.m. Pacific. Uh, UFC uh, 269 breakdown show tomorrow with Bunny. Uh, but we still got a one Cage Warriors 132 to break down. Uh, Dominique Wooding, who we both picked, by the way, in our last uh Last time out, all of a sudden four, now he's four, head- to one, four to one underdog, would he? Yep, yep. All of a sudden he is headlining the card, but uh, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We've got a, a catchweight fight. Oh boy, of one forty here uh, with, uh, but it's actually a pretty good catchweight fight. I'll be honest. Uh, Aiden uh, Stevens uh, taking on Edward Walls here. Uh, I think that this is just a very competitive fight. These guys really do mirror each other. Uh, I think in a lot of ways, um, Edward Walls is built like a fucking brick wall. Uh, this guy is a specimen. 5'10", 74-inch reach out of MMA La Penrata uh, in Finland. Uh, 10 and 6. My, so definitely... my, missus is, uh, my missus isn't here right now. I'd get her to pronounce it. But <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, I did just get yelled at by everybody. Uh, taking yeah. on the phenomenal Aiden Steven uh, of Scotland. Uh, 510 SBG Moray is where he fights out of. Uh, these guys are 145ers who are doing the catch wave 140, both kind of thinking, do we want to make it to band weight? Let's uh, figure it out together here. Uh, it's hard to believe Edward Walls will ever make uh, band and weight, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> uh, 10 and 6 lost his last fight out with Cage Warriors back in June. It was a really good uh, competitive fight with Steve Amable, who was making his return from, uh, was it a broken arm? Uh, yeah, it was, was it? it? Yeah, um, but no, I mean, one of them, yeah, yeah. Steve is just you know, he's one of these veterans, 33 years old, knows how to go in there and get a decision. It was a really, uh, it was a competitive fight, um, however, and just at times, Edwards, uh, Ed Walls, uh, was landing the good leg kicks. At other times, he was really taking the leg kicks, uh, got kind of desperate for some takedowns as the fight went on. Uh, before that, 
uh, one uh, decision, a majority decision against a five and one opponent, and then a rear naked choke. Um, kind of infrequent um, since 2019, only one fight in 2020, one fight in 2021. Uh, was supposed to face Aiden Steven back in October. I think they just moved it to now. Um, these guys, uh, they do mirror each other in a lot of ways, and a lot of uh, two of uh, his losses coming by split uh, to good opponents. Lost to Arthur Aliyev, who's with PFL. We've seen a five and zero. Uh, Manalo Sakana, who he got the um, head kick uh, KO revenge over. So. Good, good striker, um, has decent wrestling as well, just a good overall uh, specimen here. Um, but, yeah, he does tend to fight fights very, very closely. Uh, and uh, my uh, advantage for him in this fight is Aiden Steven really just goes exclusively to the grappling uh, from what I've been seeing lately. Uh, Aiden 4 now uh, lost it to Baez for real Um Pretty quickly where uh, he just was spamming the takedowns. He got a takedown, got actually swept by Perilla, and then Perilla just landed some precise ground and pound. And, uh, yeah, it just uh, put, you know, Aiden Stevens just looked away, put him away pretty quickly there. Didn't really like how quickly uh, he was put away in that one. Uh, you know, lost, but he's lost to good guys, Paul Hughes, Steve Amiable, and Tobias Harilla. Only good levels of competition beats, um, you know, the lower, uh, like Emira Samaz, uh, who we've seen a few people in um, Cage Warriors be able to beat kind of that level. Uh, I think that I'm going to go with uh, Aiden Steven just slightly, but not super confident in here. I could definitely see Walls putting him away with a, with a knockout. I think Walls... You know, half his career he fought in Finland, and they do not have high level competition out there. You know, they're hockey players; they're not, they're not, uh, they're not known for mixed martial arts. You know, with respect to them, and I have to be respectful because my missus is from Finland. Of um, course, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, they're they're absolute specimens, and this guy, you know, he he's no joke. He's got an all all round balanced striking game, which is really rare to see, to be honest, at this this kind of level. It's normally you 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 pack a punch or you you got good low kicks or something or you have got good movement distance management whatever it is pressure he's everything he's got it all but Aiden's mm -hmm. fought so many good people man and he, he beat Kingsley you know he's got some mm -hmm. absolute wicked wins he's a complete up and down fighter as you can see his record it's a it's a yo yo it's a roller coaster record but yeah exactly I think I think he should have more than enough to deal with Walls because for mm -hmm. me Walls is just a bit of his power and striking. He's got yep. some grappling, but he's he's only tapping the lower guys. He's not tapping anyone that's remotely good on the ground. And Aiden right. is a whiz. So mm -hmm. I think it's pretty I'd I'd put quite a lot on Aiden for this one, to be honest with you. Yeah, and right now he's opening as a as an even underdog. Minus one thirty is walls. So that's yeah. that's mad that's mad to me. I mean <laughs> great records are deceiving again. Yeah, again, and it's not like Walls has this prize pick record at 10 and 6 either. I think they look at Walls and his, I mean, and when you lose kind of as unimpressively as Steven did, even though it was to a very good guy, uh, maybe it scares some people away. He's uh, getting a little up there in age for this division too. So. Might be a size thing. Might be a size thing. Yeah, a it's size thing as group. well. He's a big guy. Yep. Um, but either way, uh, definitely an interesting one. Uh, and kind of interesting to see that initial line. Uh, next fight is at 125. Maximilian Valat uh, taking on Loner uh, Kavanaugh. Is that how you say it? Loner? Is it Loner? Loner Kavanaugh, yeah. Loner Kavanaugh. Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought. Valat um, scares me, man. This dude's scary, like facially. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I hate to do this to you again, but got another pickup. So I'm going to have you kind of tee it up here. Um, do you want me to start on a particular fighter? Yeah, yeah, I can go down to Kavanaugh. Okay, so we're going to go on Kavanaugh. Just, yeah, just the people know and, what I'm chatting about. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. I'll be right back. All right, no go ahead. Well, other than the uh, the crazy name of him, he's 2-0. Um, and oh. Okay, so Levana's 2-0. Oh. He's got a good amateur record, but it's so he's got a lot of draws on his record, if I remember correctly, obviously. Um, you'll see in a, you'll see in a second when it scrolls down. But he's uh he's won both his, I believe, one by submission. I think it's a guillotine choke, and the second and the first one was ground and pound. If it might have been his second fight, it was ground and pound. He's a complete mixed martial artist overall. He hasn't got one element. I would say he's necessarily better at. He's from the get go hasn't studied necessarily 
I'm a Taekwondo guy coming into MMA and I've got to learn other things. He's just straight away learned MMA, which is another one of these things. So he's a really good guy to kind of evolve the sport. He's a young guy. He's physically like you can see it. He, he's going to be up there. There's not loads to say on the guy, obviously, when you've only got two fights and, you know, I would say 70% of his amateur record is either a draw or a loss. And the wins weren't, you know, convincingly. I'm pretty sure he went to decision in every single one of his fights in his amateur. I might be corrected there, but that's just by memory. Um, when Aaron comes back and he scrolls down, obviously you'll see that. There's there's a lot to take away from him in this one, um, especially against Valo, the guy that scares me. He's got some crazy tattoos as well. But, you know, he's he's coming off two wins. He's got a lot more pro, re- you know, um, professional experience but not more experience because he's got no amateur background. You know, he's coming off a win against Meraz, I believe. I'll, I'll need the topology to see the rest of the names, but I'm he's got a lot of finishes and a lot by submission. So it's a lot of difference. Now, my memory, if I've got this right, I'm going to be very impressed with myself. I don't know if you heard any of that. All right. Uh, no, I, I didn't, but um, real quick, I'll go uh, Kavanaugh. Uh-huh. 2 and 0, four straight wins. Great so Britain top right, team hasn't don't... fought since 2019, though. Two, two finishes, a guillotine choke, and a ground pound finish of absolute nobody competition with rise of champion and fight star as an what, amateur. What, what, I, what I said is amateur record is 80 percent draws or losses. With yep. with all the, all the two, okay, I was wrong. I said it was all decisions. I, I as far as my record went, it's one loss for every naked as well. Yep. A timekeeping error caused a no decision in one of those, and two split decisions. So, kind of a weird record here. And then he's taking out four and three guy in maximum ballot. Uh, as you said, kind of a scary looking Frenchman here, twenty eight years old, uh, out of Team Sambo fighter. So he is a Sambo style fighter. He's won his last two. Uh, out a rear naked choke and a decision. Uh, again, hasn't faced a crazy level of competition. Both no these guys, as well. yeah, basically his pro career is his amateur career. It has some shoulder injuries in there. Two finishes um, by submission uh, in his losses. Uh, I think this is kind of anybody's fight. Um, I would take a look at what Kavanaugh's um, bet is at, which is minus four hundred. Give me a shot at Maximilian. I'll take a gamble. Okay, nice. I'm going to Lenar for that one just because yeah. he's I mean, 22. So he's fought yeah. a lot of those at 17, 18 years old. That's the only yeah, reason I'm saying he's he's a young, really young man. I, I totally, I totally get it. And this is by no means, uh, you know, one of my. I'm just grabbing my clipboard to keep track. Uh, Timestamps will be up after the um, fights go up. By the way, everybody. So uh, just don't worry on that if you have to pop in and out. And I know there's a lot of fights here, but. We're going to move on to kind of a fight we have a little more at least to say about. Um, we're going to the 145 uh, division here uh, for our next one between Paul McBain and Conman Day. Uh, hopefully I'm saying those right, but, you know, Conman versus Paul with two L's, six and two versus 10 and eight. Uh, Conman now is 37 years old. Uh, 10 and 8. This guy just doesn't say no to a fight, and his record shows that. Um, respect to him, the 37 year old 5'6 Frenchman. Uh, featherweight lost his last time uh, out with MMA GP back in October of uh, this year, uh, and then had a no contest uh, after, or at a no contest uh, a week later, I guess. Uh, I don't really know what the s- situation was with those two. He's fought two times in the last uh, since October. Uh, then uh, had a win with a front kick over five and four opponent. Lost three straight, two of which with Cage Warriors. One to Look Mason that. Jones. Look at, look at lost to Jack. Lost to Jack Shore. Beat yeah. Yeah, it's just, the current champion Jones in the UFC. Yeah. Shore in the UFC. <laughs> yeah, and then Solomonov. I mean, he's just he's lost to great fighters. He's beat not so great fighters. Beat Lee, um, Yeah. Yeah, and uh, he, he it's just, yeah, he's all, he's all over the place. He's uh, mostly, uh, you know, a well-rounded fighter, has more submissions uh, on his record than anything, so kind of looks to drag you into deep water, I guess. Paul McBain uh, here, uh, six, and, six and two for the uh, Scottish fighter here, the locomotive. 
Uh, we've been able to see him fight a few times now uh, with Cage Warriors. He has lost two straight. Uh, lost his last fight back in June of this year to James Hendon. Before that loss to Aiden Lead, both by rear naked choke. No shame there. Beat Steve Amable. Uh, good win there. Uh, other than that, uh, the win over Craig McIntosh early on in the career with a triangle. Um, has a couple KO finishes as well. Uh, well-rounded, and I think that he should be able to kind of expose and beat Kahneman here. So I like Paul. Yeah, I'm I'm a pool fan. Well, um, Conman's not bad at all. Um, I just don't know why he he's not more picky. But you know, being the, you know 37 years old, I know Paul's not young, but Paul's got good experience. He trains with good guys. You know, he's he's good on the mat. I, yeah, Paul's I, 33 I, nearly. Yeah, I know. It's uh, it's uh, he's not young either. But I, I would I would favor Paul as well. Not yeah. much to say on them, to be honest with you. They, no, they it's minus 300. You're obviously with a Kahneman. You're going to get him as an underdog most fights um, because he's taking fights against pretty legit competition. I definitely wouldn't be yeah. shocked if he wins this. Minus nope. 300 is too heavy for me on Paul. Um, so it's kind of just a pass. Uh, I'm just going to watch this one. So not too much more to say about that one. We'll move on uh, to the next fight, uh, which a uh, favorite of – at least of mine and Aiden James is uh, back. I really like Aiden James taking on the Italian in Ta- Tanio uh, Pacilaricchio. Uh, and that's the last time I will be saying his full name. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, do the best we can. Aiden James, uh, big fan of this guy. Um, really like uh, his aggressive, uh, you know, fighting style. And, you know, it is I definitely one of the guys that will work for your money. Um you know, uh, but only five and two still for the Wales product here, not fighting on shore MMA, actually fighting on Chris Reese Academy, 5'11, 27 years old for the Bantamweight here, uh, taking on the 23 year old in uh, Tanio uh, out of Milan, Italy, Ludus Magnum uh, camp. Aiden James will be breaking down first, five and two. Uh, as I said, uh, won his last fight out with Cage Warriors in October. Uh, where he took on Felipe Roche, uh, the Frenchman, and uh, elbowed him from the triangle. It was just a beautiful triangle setup. Uh, you know, really was landing good uh, stand-up before that. Just really aggressive performance and uh, put him away with the elbows uh, from the triangle. And, uh, yeah, it was a clear stoppage uh, to move to 7-4. and four. Before that, lost two straight with Brave FC or Brave CEF, where he faced Hamzan Kuhije, a very good fighter, nine and two, and went to a split, and then got knocked out by Cameron Else, who did debut in the UFC. So, uh, not terrible losses there. Uh, Jala Al Daj, uh, uh, six and three opponent. I mean, five and three. He's been testing himself really throughout his career. Has a win over Kingsley Crawford on his amateur uh, career as well, um, which I feel like we've said about a few guys. Um, but good amateur good. record is a yeah, crazy really record. good. Really good amateur record, a high amount of experience here. Has taken his time getting to the pros once in 2017, twice in 2018, twice 2019, twice uh, or once in 2020, and now his second time in 2021 against Tanio uh, Pagliariccio, um, the Italian, seven and two, um, and 23 years old, as I said. So, two very young guys. Uh, coming off a decision win of a four and four opponent in Pies. Uh, just overall, you can see the level of a competition of the two. There's a big difference. Uh, the amount of amateur experience, big difference as well. Um, and just overall experience, I think I'm giving to Aiden. Aiden's going to be much more aggressive. He's much more uh, a better finisher of the two of these guys. I think Aiden comes in here and kind of overwhelms Tanio. Uh, for the most part, and uh, Tanio kind of gets a lesson from Aiden, in my opinion. Yeah, that was the word I was going to use. I think he gets taught a lesson, to be honest with you. I think Aiden's the, I, the two losses, I'm, I'm I'm kind of ignoring him because it's so early on in a career. You know, he's 27. He's coming into his prime. He's he's kind of learned from these. Chris Reese is, you know, he's a, he's a great gym. Um, mm-hmm. Now, I like Aiden in this as well. I think he's a lot faster as well. I think he's going to he's gonna beat into the punch in a lot of these exchanges, so yeah, and this is one of my favorite bets on the card so far. If this price stays uh, once my book opens, minus 155 for Aiden James, plus 125 on Tanio Rico. Rico, oh, yeah. pretty surprised there. I think Aiden should uh, get it done a significant amount of the time. So 
good value potentially there. Keep an eye on that one. Uh, I would I would bet that one pretty uh, confidently though. Um, next fight is uh, really just sneaky good. Uh, 125 fight in the middle of the prelims here somehow. Um, but I'm really excited for it. Um, and uh, between uh, Aaron Abi and uh, Samir uh, Fai, uh, Fai Dinin, is it Fadinin? Uh, I'll just call him Samir from here on out. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I apologize with uh, the pronunciations, do the best I can, but sometimes I'd even with Fadin is all I would say. Uh, Samir yeah. Fadin. Yeah, I think it's Samir Fadin. I just probably overcomplicated it. But the Frenchman, 12 and 7, uh, 29 years old, taking on the 11 and 4. Uh, 33 year old Aaron Abi uh, of MMA Academy. I did make a note of Aaron's age when watching his fight earlier. Uh, MMA Factory versus MMA Academy, 5 4 versus 5 5 for the um, featherweights here. Uh, so both these guys um, fought in the featherweight or the flyweight uh, Grand Prix, I should say. Um, and they both were on the losing end. Samir lost to Luke Shanks, uh, former champion going to fight for the championship again. Went to a decision with him. He did beat Sam Creasy, though. Uh, knocked him out. Very, very impressive third-round knockout there. Uh, we know how good Sam Creasy is now. Um, so that's a that wins age very, very well. A couple more decisions as well. Um, yeah, one and one with Cage Warriors. Uh, lost to some, you know, lost to, you know, not the best level of competition, if I'm being honest, but always going to decision in those losses. Really tough. Uh, guy keeps a good pace um, for three rounds. Um, his fight with Luke Shanks was a five-round fight for the flyweight championship. Um, and it was competitive, but, yeah, Luke was just a little more aggressive there. Uh, Aaron Abbey, the 33-year-old here, 11-4-1 uh, and one, uh, out of Wales. Just kind of got physically dominated against Sam Creasy in their fight. Didn't look to have a lot in that one, if I'm being honest. It was a three-round fight, lost the decision, um, you know, in that one. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he goes to a lot of decisions, uh, has a decent to tricky grappling game, but not a lot of power on the feet. Not a lot of, uh, I think, capability to get the respect of Samir in this one. I would think Samir is able to be pretty confident in this one, push the pace and uh, get it done at some point. Um, here maybe it's a decision but i like samir uh quite a bit yeah you see you see a nice comparison with the sam creasy one's got a loss one's got a win but you got the two-year difference where sam creasy of today would smash them both to bits absolutely yeah. smash them both to, probably in the same night that's that's the level <clears throat> sam jumped to whereas for dean's kind of always been a good level he was a high level young and he's maintained that level but never improved for me enough Albie's similar the competition level is he's got a decent record really decent record but it's just not that quick and i always think samir's striking is just it, he's so good at striking mm -hmm. but he just needs to work on a lot more things um i think the power is going to be a big a big factor in this and i think fadine has got the power i would yeah. also i would also go with samir on this yeah and uh, i'm seeing aaron abi is opening as the favorite minus 140 plus 110 on samir it's a close fight for sure yeah and yeah, you know, lot, it's Aaron, such good matchmaking here. It's really easy. yeah, yeah. These guys both were fighting or for a title or title contention their last fight. And now they're fighting each other. I think it's proper. Uh, and I'll take the slight dog and Samir here. Um, Samir here that rhymes. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll move on here to our featured prelim featuring one of the Fickleacks in Mike Fickleack. Um, Mike Fickleack taking on uh, the. Uh, I believe it's the Scottish uh, Steve McIntosh, um, but I'll find out in one second here. Um, it's a Scottish yeah. name. Yeah, it definitely is a Scottish name. This is a this is an entertaining fight. Stevie McIntosh has uh, been able to watch a lot of his fights. He is Scottish, uh, higher level martial arts, taking on Trojan free fighters. Uh, Polish now fighting out of England. Uh, Mike Figalak of the Figalak brothers. Uh, Stevie McIntosh. Uh, I'll be breaking down first. Um, definitely been able to see quite a bit of his fights, known as Mop. Won his last fight out against Decky McLaren, or McLean, I should say, um, back in June of this year. Did lose to Mendy Ben, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, on with that uh, knockout in the first round where he just never was able to get it going. Um, definitely 
uh, likes to utilize his grappling, has long strikes, to however, so they are able to kind of set up the grappling, set up the, um, you know, where he wants to take the fight. But does also have quite a few KOs on his record as well. He's pretty well-rounded. Uh, the defense sometimes not where you'd like it to be. Uh, has two first-round uh, losses in his two uh, in in his career here, and uh, definitely going to be a little worried about it against a guy like uh, Mike Fikalek. Uh, who is very, very aggressive with his striking, uh, very, very powerful, 6-0 and um, as a pro, eight straight wins going to his amateur career as well. Um, knocked out – or didn't knock out, I should say. Uh, knocked out Steve Hooper, Anthony Connor, and Oban Elliott in their last three. Uh, went to a decision with Kieran Lister his last time out, 6-1-2 and two opponent. So uh, I liked seeing that because uh, – you know, you see the first round knockouts, see a second round knockouts. Those are all good. And actually doesn't have a first round knockout um, in his pro career. Um, so that's kind of interesting, really um, paces himself well, keeps his power well throughout the fight here. Um, I expect a little bit of a, a more aggressive start here because that does seem to show to be how you get to Stevie. He's a little bit of a slow starter um, and can kind of get caught early. I like I like Figlak all day in this fight. Um, I think he's going to be physically so much stronger than the lengthier uh, McIntosh. McIntosh will be uh, kind of crafty at points. That's my only real worry. But so far, what I've seen out of Mike Figlak is just composure and power. And, and I'm going with Mike Figlak until I see otherwise. There's no rush for him, is there? It's he likes to press you, corner you, and then just. He cuts mm-hmm. the cage off so well, and then doesn't just unload. He sets the. He shot. could pressure. He, sh- he, you know, you would think yeah. early in his career he would, but no, you're not seeing that actually. It's just absolute composure and picking the shot, and he he fights very similar to his uh to his sibling. So I would um, it's hard to go with McIntosh for this because when he gets, he could easily implement his game plan. I can absolutely see it. Yeah, but Mike's just got that something for me. Mm-hmm. And it, it the undefeated record doesn't I never you know records records whatever to me yeah. but um it is something it's it, they're really good wins they're convincing wins and it, I'm always worried when you see as as we sh- saw earlier with Michael that when you get round one round one round one minute 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 wins mm-hmm. have they been tested have they whatever these guys are going two three rounds with him and then he's finishing you still so he's still carrying the power throughout the whole fight and I like that so especially for the weight class so I I definitely with Figlack on this. Yeah, and, and and he's been with his brother on quite a few of these cards also. So yeah. I like that they're training together, they're peaking together, and they're used to kind of fighting together. I think it, it the helps them both. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it seems to help them both perform better and better. So, uh, yeah, I like uh, Figalak quite a bit here. Mike Figalak is the minus 400 favorite to Stevie McIntosh, plus 300. So that's pretty steep numbers there, making me a little bit nervous. But I am with Figalak here. Uh, that gets us to the main card of our second of two straight uh, Cage Warriors fights here. Uh, and this is at 145. Really good uh, start to the uh, evening here on the main card. And Tobias Harila taking on Jair Jr. Or uh, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, and I will be breaking down Jair Jr. first here. Uh, Tobias Harila was really fun to watch his tape on, though. I will say that much. Um, but Jared Jr. of Brazil, 30 and a half years old for the uh, bantamweight, now moving up to 145 out of King Shark MMA, 5'10", 73-inch reach uh, out of Curitiba, Brazil. Uh, we'll be breaking down JJ here. Um, see the 6-3 and three record. He did lose his last fight out with Bellator back in October to Kershed Krakorov, uh, the killer. Um, very good fighter there, 7-0. and um, Krakarov uh, did struggle in that fight. Jair gave him all he could handle, honestly, in that fight. It was really expected to be kind of a walkover for Krakarov. Krakarov, I believe, was a uh, – what was it? Yeah, uh, Jair was a plus 380 uh, underdog in that fight um, and definitely did not fight like such. Um, really impressive. And, but it was back in October. Um, didn't take a – a ton of damage, but I mean, that is pretty quick turnaround to go from Bellator to right back in cage warriors, uh, you know, or, but either way, um, you know, coming off of a, a fight against a guy like Krakarov, a seven and fighter, pretty impressive before that hadn't fought 
too many guys of no no winning records, in fact. Um, so one of those kind of Brazilian regional records and still managed to find a couple of losses in there. Uh, Tobias Harila uh, out of Sweden, really, really good, um, kind of tricky, deceptive, loose ground and pound for the 27-year-old. Uh, good striker overall, did lose his last fight out with Cage Warriors to William Gomez by decision before that. Knocked out Aiden Steven in a minute. Um, has uh, mostly uh, has uh, KO or doctor stoppages of all of his fights, but one uh, split decision. Uh, very good striker. Um, first round finishes for the most part in his career. Um, you know, Jair Jr. Uh, really did fight very closely in that last fight. And I think that um, it'll be kind of interesting at 145 how he deals with kind of the size and the reach. Um, but he is the taller opponent, but I do think Tobias will have a reach advantage. Tobias should be able to catch him and put him away at some point. But Jair, you know, fought Krakarov closely. Krakarov was not able to put him away. And uh, definitely would be impressive if uh, if um, Harila is able to do it. And I'm going to bet he does. But, um, yeah, this is one that I think be careful because the odds are going to be uh, pretty, pretty lopsided for Harila. Yeah, I could. This could be a, a sneaky underdog here, mm -hmm. whether whether a storm because Harid's going to come out the gates. He's he's looking, you know, he's got the buzz about him. He's coming off a loss after mm -hmm. you know having a nice win streak as well. So he's going to have a chip on his shoulder, you know, that I, I don't want to lose again kind of feeling. So Jai is um he's got some good skills, man. He's he's super well rounded. He's he's a good fighter. He really is. It's a really good. Just Cage Warriors and LFA, they they match make so perfect. Yeah. Um, and Harilla for me, it's 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 so easy to just go. It's just going to be Harilla, because mm -hmm. if you bet Jai and go, oh, the under this is where the underdog could take it, and then Harilla just comes out and does what you know he's going to do, which mm -hmm. is just control the fight and smash him to pieces. I'm yeah, really but Krakarov is a really good fighter, and he I did know, not was not. And it was know, very I close. Harilla so much. I just rate. I think Harilla just every time you see him, he just improves stack and stack. He just gets so much better every time, and. Yeah. Um, Minus I'm, 400 I'm, for Harilla, you're paying for it. Minus yeah. 400 on Harilla, plus 300 on Jair. Very predictable, I think, with um, people just looking at the odds and looking at the uh, 45 is, yeah. or 35 or moving up to 45. But uh, either way, um, I'm going to just uh, have you set up this fight here. Who do you want me to start on? And then I will be oh, right back. We've got, we've got a bit of Kent, have we? Yeah. This is. Yeah, this is uh, this is one seventy. This is the one seventy division. Kent Kapun Kapanen uh, versus uh, uh, Matthias or Mat Matuis uh, Figalot, the other Fig brother. Uh, at one seventy, uh, I will let you. Uh, who would you like to break down to start? I'll be right back. No, yeah, that's right. I'll start with Kent. So, um, all right, got... and uh, I will be right back. I apologize. This is the last time I will do this to you. Sorry. No, no, you're a good dude. All right, so, um, go ahead. No, the good the good thing about Kent, right? If we talk about Kent, we talk about a sizable guy here. You know, they're fighting a middleweight here. He's a big guy. He's uh not in the sense of height. He's I think I think now last time I got some of it right, I might get some of his statistics wrong here. I I should really have to apologize on myself or and or his statistics, but I believe he's six foot tall. But he's as you can see from the picture, he's trapped. He's thick, dude. He's absolutely made of muscle. So. The guy's got a very crazy record where he won a lot, lost a lot, won a lot, lost a lot. It's not really a yo-yo kind of scenario with him. It's a lot of losses in a row, a lot of wins in a row. He's got a very experienced record, and he's coming off a win against Jamie Richardson, who is a very, very good striker, but he's not a middleweight. He's he, he's a welterweight. He went up a weight class, and, and now he's going back down to 170, which you will see in this as well. He's got some good wins on his record. You know, he, he lost to Melvin Manhoof, though. And whenever that happens, I always worry about it. He, he took a little sidestep into boxing, into the world of boxing. So, you know, he likes to throw his hands. He's a, he is a good boxer. He lost a lot of boxing fights, though, in that sense. So it's a real tough one for me. I don't rate Kent highly, to be honest, at all. Even though he beat Jamie, Jamie is not a middleweight. So I don't rate him. I think Figlak is going to pretty much eat him alive, if I'm being honest. Um, Figlak's only loss, as far as I'm aware, is to Ian Gary. And yeah. Ian Gary choked him to shit, you know. But K 
Kent's just a complete journeyman that has he stepped into the world of boxing. I, I'm going to get you to correct this. I should have to apologize myself. I'm pretty sure he had like a hundred boxing fights, lost half of them. He likes to throw hands, but he's not that good at it. He beat Jamie Richardson, who is no, a lot of red, red, lot of red in the boxing. Yeah. So okay, I was right. That's good. <laughs> at least I'm not yeah, yeah. shit. A lot but, of red in the boxing. Uh, the the best win on his record is Jamie Richardson. Jamie Richardson is not a middleweight. He is a welterweight. <laughs> so it's just. I don't rate Kent, to be honest, at all. I think they're feeding Fig Lack some wins here. Yeah. Um, and I would be shocked if on opening night, Fig Lack is not a minus 1,000. That's how far I would go for it. Yeah, right now it's it's opening at minus 200. Straight up, if you lost to Melvin Manhoof That's, uh, by, I said that. by decision <laughs> uh, in 2019, I don't care. Like, I... No. I I looked into this mostly watching Figalat uh, fights. Got to watch some Matthias uh, Figalat fights. Um, I think that he's very good. I think Mike's the better of the two brothers. So it's kind of interesting that Matthias is higher on the card, but he's a little more advanced in his career here. Um, but yeah, I mean, the win over Jamie Richardson, it was over a non middleweight. I do like Jamie Richardson, but uh, Matthias here, uh, he has everything, including a loss on his record that I think is uh, quite helpful. I like seeing non-undefeated records, actually, and the loss was the Gary again. Um, Madaris yeah, Flaminas, Josh Plant. No, no shame um, there, sorry. Yeah, uh, you know, he's got a few decisions, got some finishes with the uh, ground and pound, the uh, submissions, you know. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite surprised that uh, Matthias is a minus 220 opening. Jump on that because it's going to take off. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just – I think that uh, – I think this is – this is Matthias Figalot. Um, I'm going to do the Figalot parlay uh, that I've done the last few times. It's worked out. Um, if if you bet sure. on Ken and he wins, I might delete my channel. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, it's just yeah. it's not. Happening. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I agree. Uh, this is that's definitely one of my more uh, confident picks uh, here. And... I will say is Figalot is a small middleweight again. That's all I'll yeah. say. It's the only difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that 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 is true, but. Yeah, I think Figlet rolls here. Uh, next fight is at at 170. Our boy Jamie Richardson, who we said was not a middleweight, and here we are at 170. Uh, he's uh, taking on the uh, former contender series fighter who took on AJ Fletcher and Leonardo Domini, uh, Damiani, I should say, out of Italy. The wrestler, uh, 31 years old, with Aurora Mike's martial arts, got a flying. Uh, knee KO in his last fight here uh, on the Contender Series. And, uh, yeah, just did not look ready for that fight. I picked Leonardo going into that fight, embarrassingly enough. Uh, 31 years old, though. Uh, prior to that, really looked like he was putting together a good uh, string of wins there, albeit not against the best level of competition. And his one loss against uh, – one fight against – Higher level of competition in John McGuire. He got uh, guillotined in two and a half minutes. Uh, AJ Fletcher uh, flying KO'd in two and two and a half minutes. So I do think that with um, Damiani, he beats a certain level of competition. I'm just wondering uh, what that is exactly. Um, but, you know, you see it. The rear naked choice, the ground and pound, really does have legit wrestling, but it's Italian wrestling. But, you know, still uh, – Taking on a ten and seven, Jamie Richardson, uh, salty, salty record here for the twenty-five year old. Though, uh, mm -hmm. won his last fight out with in October against Alessandro Boti. Uh, Guillotine choked him in the second round. Really, what you know, crafty on the ground. Uh, he, uh, you know, throw gets a lot of these fights into the later rounds. Did lose to Matthias Frederick in the third round, but. Beat Matthew Bonner, beat Philip Wells a couple times. Um, you know he's been up and down. Uh, he's he's very crafty. Uh, still only 25 years old. I really like that. And uh, you know, in his he for the most part his losses um, do go by decision. I don't know. I just don't trust Leonardo Damiani at all. But this is back over in Europe. His uh, his U.S. debut was against AJ Fletcher here. Um, you know, I, I do like that Jamie Richardson's only 25 years old, um, you know, and so uh, definitely kind of making a lot of mistakes early. This isn't one I would be super confident either way on. I'll say that much. Um, it, but 
I'm going to go with Leonardo Damiani to be able to just wrestle and control him. I just don't – I think that explosive kind of fighters are going to be tough for Leonardo, but I think he's should be able to just kind of hold and control uh, Jamie Richardson here. And maybe, you know, Jamie Richardson puts on a strong third round after dropping the first couple, but I'll take Leonardo. Um, or, yeah, I just don't really trust uh, Jamie Richardson at all. No, I don't. I don't. The only way Jamie to me is going to win this is if he knocks him out. To be honest, because the path mm-hmm. to victory for it for Leonardo is is the grappling, and that's where Jamie right. kind of lacks. And it's it's his, it's 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 the thing every time is the grindy, is the cage work, it's all the clinching, it's all the trips. It's just he he's so susceptible to it. And I know he's been working on it, and there's a reason he's cut back down to well, wait. He's realized I'm not a big. I'm you know I'm not I'm not as big as these middleweights and. He trains with big boys all the time. So Jamie's got really good striking, man. He could easily light Leonardo up if if Leonardo doesn't. You know what that you know what they're like? His path to victory is the grappling, but he's gonna stand and bang. That's and that's what so many people do, isn't it? You know, they've got one path to victory. The coaches say this is how we're gonna win, and the guy decides to go in there and do the opposite thing out of ego. Yeah. I hope that's the case because I want Jamie to win so badly. I love Jamie Richardson, he's a really good dude. Too. I've met him a couple of times. Too. He's a he's a great man. But um my, my, it's a head and heart thing. My head says Leonardo, man. I just think over three rounds, he's just going to grind him down and win a points. It's going to. I yeah. think. I think this is going to be a really boring fight. If yeah, it's, I'm not bet. I'm not betting on it. And when I see the odds, minus two sixty on Leonardo Dam- Damiani. Um, I think they kind of also see it. Unfortunately, I, that's crazy. Those odds are that steep. Though. I think it's just because he's got contender series written on his on his list that's, but it was that's a probably terrible why. it was a terrible he got series. called up that's the, that's all it is isn't it he just got yeah up, so. yeah i mean and you look at i mean and uh, when you go through the rest of that career which all took place in europe he really does look strong so could be a case of just not making the adjustment to the states i don't know but i'm not betting leonardo uh for a long time so we're on to the co-main event uh 125 a really really good fight at 125 it's a rematch of sam creasy and luke shanks uh for the 125 division uh for the flyweight title i should say uh this is a, just an excellent excellent fight here uh you know poor luke shanks gone through a little bit of a hardship over the last few here um but still eight and three uh, you know, early on in his career here and back in the title fight. So uh, he is challenging for the belt here. 5'5", 68 inch reach for the 26-year-old higher level. Mixed martial arts, blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, representative uh, fighting out Edinburgh, Scotland. Uh, the apocalypse, I'll be breaking down first here in three losses last fight out. Um, you know, it lost his last fight out with Cage Warriors in October of this year. Uh, and it was the Sam Creasy third round guillotine choke. Really good fight. Um, you know, and uh, they're going to tee it back up here. Jake Hadley, uh, these other loss, uh, other than the second round against Hadley, really just a rinse and repeat performance by Hadley. Expo- exploited uh, kind of the takedown defense and the wrestling, um, lack of wrestling there from Shanks. Shanks likes to just get in there, uh, you know, throw down volume, pressure, um, beat Samir Fadin uh, by decision um, to win the title. Lost the title to Hadley. Uh, Nicholas LeBlond. Uh, he then was Nicholas LeBlond a title fighter? No, it was just a flyweight no. fight to set up. Uh, yeah, the fight with Creasy there for the title. That was a mm-hmm. uh, flyweight Grand Prix. And then he was a favorite against Creasy in that fight. It was a really good fight back and forth. Uh, third round, uh, Creasy, um, I think he was that a standing guillotine or am I, I'm, I might be blending in with another fight, but either way, yeah. uh, it was just, it might have just been a regular guillotine choke, but it was a really yeah. tight guillotine that put it in. Uh, I'm thinking of a different fight, sorry, but Sam Creasy, 15 and three, uh, really, really entertaining fighter here, 33 years old, five six, four straight wins, uh, really has found himself here, uh, since losing to Samir. Uh, back uh, in uh, June of 2019, got knocked down in that fight. Uh, it's gone on to be Nicholas LeBlond, Adam Adam, Adam Amersing, Amersinger. I just Amersinger. can't say that name. Amersinger. I don't know why I can't say that name. Aaron Abbey and Luke Shanks in his last four. So really high-level uh, opponents here in Cage Warriors, finding his own as two third-round finishes along the way here. Um, 
I think that Creasy really uh, composes himself well through five rounds. I think he does it better than Luke Shanks, and I think he's able to do it again here. Most likely, you know, uh, looks similar to the first fight. I think you could see Shanks having some success early on and then kind of overblowing it a little bit and uh, Creasy taking over as the fight goes on. I do like Creasy, though, um, to win this one again. Oh, man, this... I, I I love Sam Creasy, and if he gets the, if he gets this win, I know Boylan's gonna get get a call. Yep. Um. You know he's he he'll be in the flyweight division in the UFC, especially as the division isn't you know it's not com- crazy deep. So, mm-hmm. um. Sam is, Sam's turned to levels. You know I'm a massive Adam Amasinger fan. Every time I go there, I was begging Adam, Adam to to strike more, and um. He was they were it was super competitive to be fair, and Adam is a pure striker. That's mm-hmm. he's whereas Sam is a mixed martial artist and that's what really showed and he kind of you know in all the fights he makes you think of so many different weapons that he's going to use it's not just one thing you're not just thinking about his hands he, he lands the low kicks to to land the hands it's that point it's to make you think about so many different things he fakes takedowns to make you faint to lower your hands sam is just elite man and luke is luke isn't elite in my head mm-hmm. he's very good but he's not elite and i yeah. think sam's going to pretty much do what he did to him and the other one but quicker yeah i like it minus 260 uh, on creasy and plus 200 on shanks here uh, i get it uh, i think that um you know the price makes sense and uh, i just don't think it justifies taking a shot on shanks here in my opinion i think creasy wins this one and gets a contract with the ufc mm, um, i agree so especially yeah. at 33 Especially at 33. It's locked yeah, 33. Off. He's got the looks. He's got the he got he has the fight style they want. He's got he's gonna have the results if he gets this one. Uh I think it makes sense. And uh next fight here, uh I think also could result in a call up if uh Dominic Wooding puts together a performance like he did in the last one. I think Dominic Wooding has a poten- has star potential. Uh, I really do. Uh and he's just not quite, Violent you know, money. Violent money. he's just starting to put it together now. Um, you know, pulling the trigger was a big thing for him. Taking on Carlos Abreu here, nine and three. I'll be honest right now. I couldn't find a lick of tape on Carlos Abreu. I couldn't find anything on him. So this is a full on topology breakdown of Carlos Abreu here. And, uh, you know, I'm also, by the way, breaking him down against a guy I'm a huge fan of and Dominique Wooding. So, so if you think this is a bias breakdown here, you, I'll admit it's correct here. Um, <laughs> Carlos Abreu Crocodilio uh, is his nickname, 29 years old, out of Man You Need. I've never heard of this organization. Fought with, uh, fought in August of this year. Uh, did get the win with RFA Fighting in their first, um, first ever event. It was a shoulder injury uh, that he won in the second round. Before that, lost the decision with Future FC. To Manuel De, Dos Santos, who did not go on to win a fight after beating him. Um, yeah, don't recognize a lot of the guys on his record here. Uh, most, you know, a few decisions has some guillotine chokes, has a rear naked choke. So I would think, uh, you know, this is a little bit of a striker mm-hmm. versus grappler type of uh, setup here, where you know, for Dominique, he likes to really flow and use the, you know, his kickboxing, use, put the highlights together. He's eight and four. Won his last two out against Cameron Hardy, six and two with head kick, and then Nathan Fletcher with the head kick. Before that, uh, fought with Bellator, losing to Franz Mimbambo, uh, not a bad fighter at all. And then Fabrique Diata, one of the best prospects in all of MMA, went to a decision with him. And I think after that fight, he got, that fight made him just so much better to be against a very similar type of guy. See what you know, see what he could improve on. Now, he's come out and he's gotten two highlight uh, finishes, but the Nathan uh, Fletcher fight, he really was showing good composure. He was putting together really good uh, rounds before that third round finish, so it wasn't just waiting for waiting around like he has in some of his um, previous um, fights. Uh, even the Dominic Dillon fight with Bama in the Blaine O'Driscoll fight, he let those fights be really close and then got that highlight real um, shot to eliminate the losses in the early rounds. Um, I think he is just getting better and better here. This fight really seems to be set up to highlight Dom- Dominique Wooding to put a guy like uh, to put a guy like this in the um, in uh, Carlos Abreu in the title fight here for his Cage Warriors debut. I think is a little bit suspect, and uh, yeah, I think this Dominique Wooding 
Dominic's uh, fight to win. Dominic winning yeah. KO. I'd be I'd be shocked if Dom doesn't win this. And and considering he came in as a four to one underdog against Nathan Fletcher, everyone thought Nathan Fletcher was going to absolutely manhandle him and finish yep. him quite easily. And I told you, didn't I? I think I, I was saying like bet the house and Wooding. Like yep. and Wood, since since moving to uh, British top British dot team as well. You know, he's again that he's with people his weight class. I don't have it's with Ashley Grimshaw is an amazing coach as well. And then training with Brad Pickett, mm-hmm. who is the only English wrestler we've ever really dominated with in and he was in the UFC for so long and manhandled people. You know, he when Nathaniel Wood has got that style, he's yeah. he's a, he's like Brad Pickett 2.0 almost and, and training with these guys. Like I was talking about it yesterday, Brad Wheeler again. Brad said there's a reason he's called Black Panther. He's you cannot take this guy down. He's so quick and so elusive. Mm-hmm. And, his movement's so good. And the record's very deceiving again. He's fought. Yep. The two losses in Bellator, those Bellator guys, you know, Diata could be in the UFC 100%. That Absolutely. dude is that dude is so good. Featured title. Featured title contender. contender. He really is, man. He really is. And you, you got to think, this guy's 25 years old. He's got a lot of good, you know, the record is good. Now mm-hmm. it's the time he evolves. He takes those losses and he and he learns from it. And it looks like he has. The Nathan Fletcher win is so good. And yes. this one to me is a much easier fight than Nathan Fletcher. Way mm-hmm. easier fight. I agree. Again, I've only ever seen one with a Brayu and it was like a camera phone video. So I okay. don't have a lot to go in as well. I'm with yeah. you. It's really difficult to see. And the record is a sketchy record in a crap organization against right. people you never heard of with crap records. So right. the only outcome you can really have is wooding by flying knee or some, you know. Right. Wooding a highlight reel finish. Wooding only a minus 200 right now. If that Bet price opens. Bet yeah. The house. <laughs> yeah. That is, that is crazy, crazy odds. Uh, with elite level going... coaching as well. That's the other thing. Yeah. You, and, the and only team. 20, and only 25 years old. And again, I just think facing a fellow pure and Diada and seeing how, uh, yeah, that he, he, first of all, went a decision with him. It was very competitive. And yeah, I think this is uh, Wooding's uh, easiest fight in his last three. So, oh, um, yeah, absolutely. It should, should be really, uh, yeah, that is, uh, that's going to do it. Uh, that is 23 fights um, that we just broke down here on the channel. I will begin the timestamps up here. As well for everybody, they are starting on Friday here in the States, I believe, at probably like about 2 p.m. Eastern time. So I believe 7 o'clock uh, for you guys. They start on Friday, Saturday as well. And then Friday, we also have the LFA 120, which I'll be breaking down with Lucky Locks here on Thursday. We have UFC 269 on Saturday as well, which I'll be breaking down with Bunny. Comment out here on the channel around uh, this time. We'll be starting just around this time, so about 7 p.m. Eastern. Go ahead and check out the channel uh, for all that. Uh, appreciate JR Smile, UFC betting experience. Everybody who joined me today, uh, appreciate the likes, the subscribes. Go ahead and uh, share this with your friends. Check out Lewis and Norton MMA. He's got his UFC 269 breakdown up right now with Brad Wheeler, former UFC uh, fighter, I believe former. Cage right? Cage Warriors. Cage Warriors. He owns okay. the record for the most Cage Warriors fights. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. yeah. And so um, either way, uh, it's uh, I haven't gotten to check it out yet, but guarantee, oh, uh, yeah, it's uh, gonna be solid. He uh, had to re-upload it right as we started this, so I'll be checking it out right after this to get my notes. But yeah, give Norn MMA a follow. Uh, thank you, Jr. Smile. Uh, everybody else has joined us. Lewis, thank you for joining me as always. Uh, double double Cage Warriors breakdown is in the books. Uh, anything coming up on your channel you want to let the people know about? We're going to be doing a Monday review show from now on, I believe. So after, so obviously gives people in the, the UK and Europe the day after to watch the fights because we normally record it because it's at yep. stupid o'clock in the morning. So yeah, Monday's uh, Monday evening is going to do a live a live stream for that. Just a cool. quick 20, 30 minute reviews and uh, yeah, keep up to date on the on the who wins and the and the what's next. Right on, right on, man. Keep up the good work. Uh, and as always, it's a pleasure to break these down. Uh, thank you everybody for joining me. Uh, for Aaron and Lewis. Uh, We are out. I'll see you tomorrow for the UFC Breakdown Show with Bunny herself. Peace out, everybody.